Hello my Soccer Universe to the review of a remarkably unremarkable uh, Serie A weekend, but it was still very remarkable. I mean, while there were many results there where they said, oh something big happened, but then in the end they all nullified and nothing really happened. If we look at the grander scheme of things in terms of the standings. Uh, it was remarkable in the sense uh, that none of the top seven teams ahead of this match day, now um, one of them is already top eight, did not win. None of them won. And it was so uh, odd that you thought on Saturday evening, I was so unhappy with Milan dropping points at lowly Sal Salernitana. Atalanta keep losing. Atalanta lose. Then Inter lose. At that moment I knew, okay, that point might have been very valuable. And then Napoli yesterday also, I mean, uh, should have probably lost to Cagliari. So uh, really, it, it's not a title race, it's a title stale mate. Uh, I mean, it's maybe a title slog, title joke, whatever. It's it just, it, no one maybe wants to have this title. I think many want to have this title, but uh, the results officially didn't show it on the pitch. And so it's Fiorentina that I'm gonna wear, because they, the, they had an impressive win over Atalanta and are back in the top seven and probably could rebound thanks to a well-known striker in Italy <laughs> that is actually not all that good but he scores goals and I know him very dearly and he's the Vlaovic. We're talking of course of Shishtov Biontek. Um, yeah, I loved him when he had his great form at Milan but I think he's very streaky and uh, very dependent on confidence. I would say we'll start with Turin Derby which is another one of those where Honestly, Torino would have deserved to win that match. I saw most of it and yes, the Licht gave them an early, early lead, but at that time Torino probably should, should have led already and, and that actually that, that lead a little bit shook Torino. But in the second half there were enough chances for Torino to actually take all three points and finally win a Turin Derby again. Uh, it was only a 1-1 through Belotti, uh, <laughs> a little bit also. Uh, and uh, rather unbelievable story that Pelotti did score this goal, but yeah, one one in the Derby della Mole. Uh, Sampdoria, boy, did I find a nice Sampdoria shirt this uh, uh, this week, and I decided to not yet get it. I hope it hangs around for a while, but yeah, just saying. Two nil over Empoli, also big winner of this match day. Uh, Roma. The teenies need to bail Mourinho out because in the first half it was all one-way traffic. No, not one-way, but it was all Verona. Two goals, actually three goal scores, two, two of which counted. So after 20, 20 minutes, they find themselves 2 nil down. And then uh, Volpato and Bove did get equalizers. And if you're like me, you've never heard those players before unless you're a diehard uh, Roma fan. And Mourinho got sent off for insinuating that the referee has been bought. Milan Salernitana was one of those performances that I actually saw coming. I have less trouble with Milan playing against the big teams than against the small teams. Against the big teams, they seemingly always find a performance. It's just the question, are they over overmatched as they are usually were usually against Inter, but this time, the time around, they still could get a, a, a steal a win. Um, Against the smaller teams, they always stumble. And it seemed so good after five minutes. Uh, Theo Hernandez, wonderful pass to Messias. And it's 1 0. And then I think for the next few, 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 few minutes, if they make a second one, done and dusted, you can shut it uh, down. The problem is they, sh they still shut it down. And then uh, Mike Mignon makes uh, an error, a rare error, I must say. And so, yeah. It is one, uh, one through Bonazzoli. And uh, it didn't look good at that point and yeah I thought maybe this is just a blimp but I have to give it a lot of credit I mean um, the Salsa Sanitana with a new coach uh, definitely uh, seemed to be reinvigorated re 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 actually played their hearts out I mean as much as I wanted Milan to win this one I actually uh, could, could, could see the Salsa definitely would deserve to get something out of that game. Um, very quickly on Magnon, I want to say I think he's an excellent goalkeeper um, and I think he really 
Donnarumma also had his mistakes. He really replaced Donnarumma and his distribution and so on. He adds another dimension. Yes, maybe size-wise there's, but you know, there are always give and takes with goalkeepers. However, uh, the statistics where they were comparing Mignon and Donnarumma over the past few seasons, I always find unfair a sample size for Mignon is much, much smaller. B, it's not fair in the sense that Donnarumma has been on really, really bad teams for uh, the first three to four years of his Milan career. So that also needs to be at death that they that, definitely that say, don't, I don't like those statistics at, at, at all. As much as I'm upset with Don or Roma, I felt uh, we have to be fair to him in that case as well. Uh, second half, Milan trying, but you know, uh, what also is that Giroud was completely anonymous and up front, it just didn't click. It always looked off and uh, so Rebic comes on for Brian Diaz, uh, wasn't needed because Diaz, I think he should come on as a substitute more than as a starter. I think he has more Im impact on a tired team than if someone can really plan for him. Um, but I have to give it to South Santana. They were always threat threatening and then they get through Mazzocchi, a cross in and Juric makes it 2-1 and I thought, oh no, this is now exactly the result we didn't need. Fortunately, Rebic, with the only good action that he had the entire game. I mean, Leao, great. Uh, Theo Hernandez, uh, da, da, da. Tonali, that da, da was a little scared there. Yeah, I uh, could also. But, you know, uh, Rebic came on. He scores the equalizer where I thought it was uh, deflected. It was not. But then, uh, I think late in the game, there were two good situations. He decides to take a shot. It doesn't even go on goal. It goes far off. And I'm thinking, oh, no. What, what, what's here? And so, yeah, um, it ends 2-2. I thought at this point, this really gets Milan out of the title race. Alas, it doesn't. Everything but actually it turns out that Milan increased their lead. Yes, game in hand for Inter. But at the moment, it increased their lead. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable stuff. Uh, happening there. Uh, so, and then the, the writing was kind of on the wall um, for the early game between Fiorentina and Atalanta. A game that was, uh, to, to be fair, rather even, and Atalanta probably did not necessarily deserve to lose that, uh, that one. The goal by Piontek, it was classic Piontek. Uh, <laughs> I really have to say, uh, he's a phenom in Italy because if, if you get him the ball the right way, he will score goals for you. The problem is that I don't think he can keep it up. As soon as um, defenses get readjusted to him, and we saw it at, at Milan, then they came to wait for the, num the number nine and at Hertha, I think he suffered from a really poor Hertha team there as, as, as well. But yeah, uh, that, that, that was really interesting to see. But Malinowski gets an equalizer for Fracture of sight, it's not called. Gasparini, of course, getting absolutely mad. And Fiorentina get a really, really, really big win. Venezia cannot relieve themselves of any relegation trouble with only 1 1 against Genoa. And then Inter against Sassolo. I actually could, in a way, see this coming because Inter really played their hearts out against Liverpool. And that must have been draining. Not only did you run, you worked your asses off, and then. You're losing this. This must be deflating. In addition, Brozovic now are playing, so you have kind of, kind, of, kind, of, kind of the metronome in midfield is missing. And so I could see maybe that Inter might not win against Sassuolo. A Sassuolo team that has been really, really good. And Sassuolo complete, uh, completes a rare feat of winning at Juve, at Milan, and at, at Inter. The last time they did it was Fiorentina in the 50s and they became champions. Sassuolo will not do that. Raspadori and Scamacca scoring the two goals uh, in a win that really Eastmaners Interpro would have deserved a little bit more of that. I, I have to be that fair. Uh, but, you know, I had a feeling that Sassuolo could do something. Fortunately, that they did. And so the point is Salinitano, although it was first against last, doesn't look that bad. Uh, Udine, also the, the team that Milan will play next, as, as we see, a 1-1 against Lazio. I'm also afraid of that matchup. And then Cagliari against Napoli. Uh, honestly... What I was amazed is that, yeah, seemingly the Barcelona matchup is much more important at the moment because uh, it was not the first string lineup for Napoli. Uh, first half, there was not much happening, but I think the chances plus was with Cagliari. But in the second half, Cagliari 
absolutely uh, destroyed in many ways now, 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 now the goal by Pereiro that was a goalkeeper mistake but whatever then Ospina had to save afterwards were world class parades and there was one uh, I, th I think from João Pedro who had a perfect header and then it falls di directly to another Cagliari uh, player who cannot pull it into the empty net and you really thought uh, Cagliari would have deserved the win and they probably would have needed that I mean Cagliari is also another team where I, th I think they're much better than their current position uh, showing and then with their only shot on goal in the second half uh, Victor Osman gets an equalizer absolutely crucial goal for them to kind of stay in this title race and like Milan yeah edge closer to Inter we have uh, Napoli Milan coming up rather rather soon and then Anatovic with a brace against Spezia uh, finishes the match day in a way um, so if we look now at the current standings uh, as I said suddenly the title race opens up a little bit more it's not 20% for Milan uh, almost 20% for Milan 70 for uh, Inter 10 for Napoli roughly speaking yeah so rounding up uh, is still very much Inter but it looks much 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 closer as you can see, nothing really happened. Juve is not moving any, anywhere. Atalanta also not. Lazio, it's Fiorentina, Kuko over Roma. If we look towards the bottom, uh, as I said, Cagliari is still in trouble. Um, you know, Venezia having a game uh, in hand that could see them up. But I actually think that Cagliari probably will not get implicated. Uh, they will get themselves out of there. The question is, will Salernitana? I am actually afraid that Venezia uh, will probably drop. Um, they, are, they have been trending a little bit the wrong uh, way. So, yeah. Uh, Sampdoria, though, also relieved themselves from some trouble. Uh, if we look at the next round, um, it is a solo against Fiorentina. Fior, 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 that's the one that really sticks, sticks out. Then there's, of course, Lazio against Napoli. Uh, kind of, so, sort of. Already on Friday, we have the Milan Derby because this they kind of put this on the front because we have the Milan Derby in the cup uh, then uh, a week after. So we have Milan against Uden and then Genoa against Inter uh, on Friday already. Kind of a little bit of prelude of, of the madness that's going to happen in the cup. So yeah, that was it from me from Italy. Uh, I would like to know what you thought about this remarkably unremarkable round. Again, very remarkable results there, but in the end, it all cancelled itself out and it became rather, yeah, as I said, title slog in many ways. Any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my uh, channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!